Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant, and I'm here to take a look at the epic history of the Federation. This episode forms a part of my series on all the lore and history of the Elite Universe. The Federation is one of three major factions within human-occupied space. The other two are the Alliance and the Empire. The Federation is the oldest of these major factions, these superpowers that control everything. But to truly understand the Federation, we need to begin at the start of humanity's foray into the stars. The first 100 years of the 21st century marked huge progress into space. In 2020, the first commercial space station went live. And within just 10 years, we were to see the first baby to be born off-world. Many may have believed this was to mark the beginning of a new era for humanity. However, the same age-old problems continued. Thus, World War III began in 2040. This war, perhaps the worst to ever be waged across the face of the planet, wrought much destruction and loss of life. Eventually, in the 2050s, after over one decade of war, the fight was gradually abandoned. But civilization had taken a massive hit and the governments and military alone no longer had the ability to repair the damage done. The corporations of the era stepped in and began the slow rebuild process. This gained the corporations a huge increase in dominance over the Earth's political landscape. And in many ways this was perhaps the birth of the ideologies that would ultimately influence the Federation. But humanity had not forgotten the stars, and perhaps because of the destruction wrought upon the Earth, we once again looked up and wondered. In the 2070s, two significant space-related events occurred. This decade saw the first man on Mars, and as a testament to a journey that began over 100 years earlier, the first permanent moon base was constructed. This allowed humans far easier access to space, and soon many orbital cities were constructed around Earth. From this point, the first tentative forays into interstellar space began with the launch of deep space probes. This was shortly followed by the heavy industrialization of the Moon, as well as the construction of the first base on Mars. As we entered the 22nd century, it was a time of massive change, not just for where and how we lived, but of what we understood about the galaxy. At the beginning of this century, fossils were discovered on Mars, proving beyond all doubt that life once existed there. Human expansion slowly progressed throughout the solar system, and perhaps the biggest breakthrough of all time was made. The discovery of hyperspace. The ability to travel faster than light, which would allow humanity at last to escape the confines of the solar system. In 2210, approximately 30 years after the launch of the first interstellar probes, the first signal is received from a probe in Alpha Centauri, sending with it the first pictures of a planet to be seen outside of our solar system. From this point on, probes continued to arrive in neighbouring star systems and soon life is discovered on Tau Ceti III. Thus begins a new path of exploration and discovery as hyperspace-capable probes are sent to all nearby star systems. With the knowledge that Tau Ceti can support life, a colony ship was sent there. And before long, the first human colony to exist outside of the star system was formed. Proving with all certainty that human life can exist outside of our solar system, a mass exodus of Earth began. Massive resources and effort were expended to construct ships with the intention of establishing colonies anywhere that may support human life. The expansion of humanity moved apace, rapidly crossing the voids between star systems. New colonies and ultimately cities were formed, and with them come new cultures, ideologies and governments. But all was not well on Tau Ceti III, the first of the human colonies. 
The indigenous life of the planet was slowly but surely becoming extinct, being destroyed, hunted and otherwise harmed by the human colony there. As news of this reached the solar system, Earth insisted that the extinction stop and they backed this up with a threat of force. However, the Tau Ceti colony continued onwards, oblivious of Earth's demands, feeling they now had no alternative. Earth sent a final ultimatum to the colonies. But this too was ignored. Earth began to mobilize a military force to deal with the situation. And this in itself was the key that resulted in the birth of the Federation. The founding members, Earth, Tower City, Delta Pavonis, Altair and Beta Hydri. Throughout the rest of the century, the Federation spread its influence across the galaxy, seeing itself as the Galactic Police Force, the Federation's dominance within the galaxy remained unchallenged, at least until the birth of the Empire. In many ways, the Federation is based upon a very authoritarian ideology, controlling much of what its citizens may and may not do. However, Whilst the Federation has a very strong government, one which is elected and led by a president, one should not be fooled into believing that it is the government who holds control over the Federation. The Federation is dominated very much by the corporations. These entities control almost every aspect of life, politics and business within the Federation space. And for the most part, every aspect of life is focused upon profit. Whilst corporations are not above the law, they hold a very wide remit as far as what they are permitted to do in the name of profit concerns. Extreme corruption and even murder are the norm rather than the exception. That said, in its own way, the Federation does respect human life, much more so than the Empire, although they certainly do not respect freedom as much as the Alliance. It is claimed that peace and stability are the reasons that so many activities are illegal within Federation space. And the belief is in peace through control, as opposed to peace through freedom. It could perhaps be reasonably and successfully argued that it is this very attitude that ultimately led to the fracturing of human civilization, giving form to the Empire. For much of the centuries between 2300 and 3300, extreme tension and regular states of war existed between the Federation and the Empire. And although in the present age a state of peace exists between the two superpowers, it is an uneasy one, a peace that could perhaps be easily broken. A lot of mystery exists around recent events and the rise to power of the current unelected President Zachary Hudson and the recent assassination of Emperor Hengist Duvel of the Empire has the potential to cause events to spiral out of all control. And it may well be on these two elements that the future of the Federation spins. Check out my YouTube channel for the epic history of the Alliance and the epic history of the Empire. And be sure to check back regularly for all other lore-related videos on the Elite Universe. As always, thanks for watching. Catch you guys and girls next time.